Thanks for joining me and uh, as the Ondo Governor's Report 2020 and uh, voters are churning out and we've been following uh, reports and of course our correspondents across the stretch of the 18 local governments uh, having uh, 3,009 units and of course 203 words. Uh, they also will be uh, giving us uh, some uh, feeds on what is transpiring and the polls for today, October 10. Uh, you agree with me that this uh, electoral process has been longer waited for and uh, gone in for the governorship seat and comprising of seven. Which, as some we say, well, uh, we having like seemingly a three horse race on this poll, having the APC, the PDP, and the Zenith Labour Party uh, dominating. Uh, activities and participation in the electoral process. All right, discussing this with me, uh, starting from my immediate left, I have a, a legal practitioner, and uh, he is A.B. Thomas. Thanks for joining me, A.B. Thomas. Good morning, viewers. Good morning to you. And next to him, I have the NBA uh, chairman, Benin Branch, and he is Pius Oiwo. Pius Oiwo is the current NBA chairman. Congratulations. I'm so, thank on you that. so much. I'm glad to be in your studio this morning. All right. So, we, as the show progresses, we basically, like I did say, will be uh, getting feeds from the correspondents that we have on the ground in Ondo State. And, uh, we understand vividly that uh, there was a mishap as a boat capsized in Ilaje local government in the course of uh, uh, carrying INEC officials and materials. And we understand that INEC will be making a statement uh, clearly in that direction. And uh, if that in any way will affect the, the smooth sail of the electoral process. And uh, also we expect that the churning out of voters we bring about a huge turnout in terms of uh, voting in the, the voting population. And uh, we have uh, basically about 1.4 uh, registered voters who have already been given uh, PBCs. Uh, from that fraction, we have 1.8, but 1.4 uh, have been given PBCs. And we expect that from that 1.4 uh, million, we should be having a, a, a very huge uh, turnout in that direction. And uh, looking at this, I start with you, A.B. Thomas. Uh, from all the process so far, uh, what do you make of the development in terms of the expectations uh, as per uh, voters turning up <coughs> for the electoral <coughs> process this morning? Well, I expect a large turnout of voters in their own those states. Firstly, the Edo uh, state election has become a yardstick for voters all over Nigeria, particularly the stakeholders, to galvanize voters to come. Secondly, the Edo State election has in some way restored some confidence in the voters themselves, that their votes will count. And thirdly, the performances of the man we call Akete, that is Akedulu, in the Sunshine State, Ondo State, in the past two years, we also galvanized people to come out to vote. Whether he has performed well to their expectations in the past two years or not. So I expect, <clears throat> in spite of the violence that trailed the campaigns, I also expect that, that instead of diminishing voters enthusiasm. Yes. It will galvanize them to vote. Because uh, not many Nigerians will remember that although people have always voted in large numbers, mm. 
if you remember <coughs> what happened between Amaboriowo and Adasi yeah. in 1983, which, of course, since there's no more history being taught in schools in Nigeria, <laughs> not many people know that that incident had a direct reflection to the emergence of Buhari in a military coup. The Yoruba said no. All those states votes must count. I remember my late father moving from Abekuta in what is called today Ogo State to Ondo for that election alone. So there will be election, there will be a large turnout, and the people's votes must count so as to avoid what happened between Amoborio and late Ajasi. Okay. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, uh, back to you, uh, Pius. Uh, let's take a stretch of what has been transpiring so far in the electoral process before now. Uh, some political pundits are saying that uh, with uh, previous uh, realities in Ondo election, uh, they expect that uh, there could be uh, also uh, ballot snatching, uh, voter intimidation, and of course, uh, vote buying. Uh, with what we have experienced so far, uh, do you see that churning out? Well, uh, just like uh, Chief A.B. Thomas, my very learned senior, said while he was reacting to the question posed, um, the Edo experience is uh, like an eye opener. A, an eye opener a springboard uh, for other states to emulate. And of course, uh, with what happened here on the 19th of September, you will agree with me that there has been a paradigm shift from the experience in the past to what we now experience in terms of consciousness in the electoral process. Of course, INEC, the umpire uh, for the election, has also assured that they are going to improve on the, uh, the defects, okay. perceived defects in the Edu election okay. to improve on what is on in on those Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll pause you there. Uh, as, as we can see, uh, we have uh, from the feeds, journalists uh, struggling to interview the governor and the candidate of APC, Governor Rotimi Akerodolu. Uh, we will be joining them now. We're right now at uh, Fajuye Road, Isaac Men Ward 8 of uh, Owo. Uh, NYC officials who will be conducting the elections, they already prepared, like you can see from this end. Uh, they are about leaving this spot. Uh, this particular place we are now at uh, Fajuye Road is also the local government coalition center, which equally serves as uh, the RAC center registration area center. Uh, but before we got here, we had already seen uh, some other NYC members at various police units. So everything is set. Security is also in place uh, at the moment.
Guys, thank you very much, uh, Best Imperial, for that. As we can see, uh, attempts to really interview the uh, incumbent governor, who is the APC uh, governorship candidate, Governor Rotimi Akiridolu, ongoing. And uh, this, you agree with me, is going to go a long way to decide uh, what will be taking place in 2023. Uh, we can uh, also say that the APC. Uh, which uh, wasn't able to have a grip of uh, the hold in Edo State, uh, they will be capitalizing in, on those states to really uh, have that. And uh, how that will turn out, I think uh, we have a big day ahead of us to determine that process. All right, so from what you can see, uh, still you have the floor, uh, Pius Oiwo. Yes, uh, like from what you can see, uh, you can see that <coughs> substantially, uh, there has been huge uh, progress in terms of uh, the churning out of voters' participation in this election. Yes, sincerely speaking, like I said, the, elect the electoral empire, empire has been doing so well. Like we've seen that uh, the, there is readiness and consciousness on the part of the electorates to come out and exercise their franchise. And of course, you agree with me that the, uh, the Undo experience now, as it is, we have uh, three major candidates. And of course, there has been this drive, mm. this urge to actually, at the end of the day, have one to outshine the other. Of course, not minding the fact that there were pockets of violence in the build up to the election. Um, the various candidates, they are also very formidable in their own rights. But again, like you uh, would agree with me, particularly considering their due experience, when you pay money or when persons, politicians embark on uh, vote buying, vote buying as yeah. it were, uh, it no longer <coughs> has uh, a kind of uh, weight. Will you say it's no longer okay? Yeah, it, it doesn't. It's, it's not. It it's doesn't not really. It's not longer anymore. substantial. It's, yes, noticed. yes, yes. It may be able to sway some people, but gradually, this is a practice that will fade out. Because you recall that in the previous elections, uh, vote buying played a substantial uh, role. People's uh, people's uh, conscience were easily bought, but people have come to realize that if you collect just a paltry sum, say five thousand naira or 10, as it were, uh, to mortgage your future, which is going to be for the next four years. Certainly that sum of money will not be able to do anything substantial, will not affect you in any way. So people have uh, begun to rise up to the occasion to say, look, even if we collect money from you, we would still go ahead to vote our conscience. Okay. Not minding the fact that, of course, vote buying is criminal in itself. It's an offense under the Electoral Act. Yet, persons will collect this money to say, oh, this money belongs to us, it's our money. But let's go ahead to vote our consciences. And that is what we are seeing. And I believe that is going to replicate also in those states. Thank you, Pius Oiwo. Uh, as, as we also uh, can notice in the electoral process, like you did say, uh, the major uh, contenders, but we have 17 political parties, and we can only say they are all major. Uh, there is no one playing a light role, but uh, <laughs> we look at the uh, candidate of the uh, Zenit Labour Party and that of the PDP and APC. Uh, they are all lawyers in their distinguished uh, uh, capacities. Now, uh, what do you think that will come up with? Because we expect that in our present uh, day uh, of electoral, uh, bringing betting electoral integrity, uh, the aspect of vote buying should be a thing of the past. And the aspect of also uh, prosecuting offenders, those who give and who take, uh, do you see that really uh, being inhibited uh, as a custodian of the law in our electoral process? Well, we have to first and foremost put our neck in the dock, mm. so to speak. There are two aspects of vote buying. One, when people begin to sell their voters cards before the election, is vote, is uh, vote buying. 
instead of voter's card, we notice that in those states. You, buy, you, say, you give your voter's card out, you get 5,000 naira and a bundle of wrapper. <laughs> it's vote by. That is where INEC actually comes in. Okay. Every voter has his picture or her picture in the voter's card. And you have your thumbprint, which you can't read that out to read. So if INEC can get the ass together, so no matter how many voter's cards you buy, before the election day, those cards become useless. Okay. If the INEC and the voters uh, reader machine are working. Second one is the one I also noticed mm. on my own. By votes at the police stations. That one in tandem with my president and my chairman, mm. is dying gradually. Is dying gradually? Yes. Because you go to police station, which I noticed is not, I was told, there's no hearsay here. I have been chairman in my community for the past 15 years. And people came to me, chairman, sir, Look at the money I was giving. What do I do? I said, go back and vote your conscience. Don't come and complain to me. Take the money, but go and vote your conscience. And we stayed to the end of the election. We saw people queuing, but we didn't see how they were voting, balloting. Mm. But the calculation, I still have my calculation to today. I still have them. So Nigerians are becoming aware that this 5,000 and rapper is not what you and your family will be sustained on for the next four years. That is not to say it will not happen in today's election in Ondo State. Okay. It will. Okay. After all, in a kitty election, that was how my brother Fire said people voted for him in respect of the election that asked the former governor preferring Rapa and 5,000 to the technological development of Ekiti State. Ekiti was once part of old, the old Odo. Be that as it may, we should constitutionally or statutorily create a new body okay. that will be in charge of arresting, investigating, and prosecuting those who are involved in vote buying and those who are being bought. The Nigerian police is already overburdened with so many new criminal activities in Nigeria. So they need to be helped. The FCC that we thought would be of great use is already, from what you are seeing as journalists, is also being overwhelmed. DSS and the army ought to have no role to play in elections. So we need to have a new body so as to check the excesses of our politicians who feel they must 
come to power through enemies, including unquote do or die affair. Okay. So this vote by which is not peculiar to Nigeria alone. We have seen a European country where elections held a few days ago cancelling their parliamentary election results because people came out in mass to protest against vote by. It's happening. Okay. But let us be known okay. for the good things of the world. Okonje Wala has just been elected as World Trade Organization mm. DG. Kudos to the country called Nigeria. Mm. We should be known for good things. Mm. We can lead Africa against vote by. Okay, thank you. Uh, going forward, looking at the aspect of uh, having a separate body like what uh, Barista A.B. Thomas just said, uh, with the current realities of politicians who are in power, who would want to also use this means of vote buying to uh, uh, carve a niche for themselves, <laughs> do you see this as having that uh, way in terms of uh, making that body really actualized, as A.B. Thomas said? Well, uh, honestly speaking, uh, in this aspect, I want to beg to differ. Okay. From the submission of the, the, my very learned senior chief, A.B. Thomas. I do not want to believe that the police is overboarding. Um, we have specialized agencies too, like the EFCC and the rest of them who are involved in arrest and uh, prevention, arrest and prosecution of uh, crimes. But the truth is this. If there is a genuine and sincere efforts by government to prosecute electoral offenders, then we we'll always get it right. The problem has always been that when persons are involved in electoral offenses, it is either the politicians from the top interfere with investigation in a way that such arrests are not prosecuted to the latter. Which is a setback. Which is a major setback. Of mm. course, INEC, unfortunately, has not done well over the years because we've really not seen um, or come to hear of cases of convictions of persons who are involved in electoral offenses. Uh, this is because at times there is this blame shift. INEC will blame the police. The police will blame INEC. INEC is a complainant in such a process. Of course, it is the responsibility of the police to arrest and prosecute uh, the commission of an offense. But the police themselves, if you have cause to be close to some of them, they will tell you that they've been having this challenge of the politicians, either those in office who have taken over. For instance, a particular political party, let me say YPP, for instance, is in the helm of affairs and has won an election. And some of its uh, members were involved in vote buying, mm. then of course you can imagine that there will be a direct interference with the police in a way that instructions are given. And such persons who have been arrested, who ought to be prosecuted, are now allowed to be off the hook. Mm. That has always been the problem. So I think what we should do, as a matter of fact, is that INEC should come out visibly and condemn some of these things that are being done. They should actually come out and uh, state a position. We also have reports of uh, the monitors and the uh, observers, both foreign and local observers, who come to even report the, the, uh, the fact that certain persons were arrested or certain um, offenses were observed in the course of uh, the conduct of an election. But to what extent do we see their reports being implemented? It will appear that most of the reports by the electoral, the observers and the yes. monitors are jettisoned or dispensed with after each election. As it seems. Yes. I think there should be this consciousness. There, 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 there is this attitude of us, Nigerians, I'm sorry to say. 
We attend seminars. We attend symposium. And at the end of the day, the communique is issued. But it will appear that we go back to our old ways. It's like you attend a funeral where you are told about the life and tide of a man who has lived so gloriously. The man, of course, would, was someone you met yesterday. He was so good, he was so kind, he had touched the lives of so many persons. And you feel that, look, in a short while too, you will be like this man. But at that ceremony, everyone is sober. You begin to think of yourself. But the moment you leave that place, you go back to your old ways. And that is what is innate in man. There should be a gradual departure from the ways we are doing things. Let us begin to forge, uh, I mean, begin to clamor for a new approach. Let us not do things in their usual way. Let us do things the way they ought to be. Okay. The electoral body should come out to say, look, this is our responsibility under the Electoral Act. Okay. The police should come out to say, look, um, under the law, it is our responsibility to investigate the commission of crimes. And then when persons are prosecuted, like they are now doing in offenses of rape or those sexual offenses, there is now a register for those who are involved in sexual offenses. Of course, you begin to see uh, the consciousness and uh, the, do I say, the attitude of people changing because nobody wants to be blacklisted. Okay. Because if that is done, of course, it's something that goes down into memory lane. Thank you, Pius. Or you will, I'll come back to you a bit, Thomas, but quickly, just in case you're just joining us as on the 2020 governorship uh, election, and uh, I'm your host for this segment, Philip Omo Gupon. And don't forget that you can join this conversation using our various uh, social media platforms. And of course, uh, you can also listen up uh, live streaming, and of course, on 92.3 FM Independent Radio. Uh, this conversation is going on live on radio. And uh, looking at what we have here, like the IGP did say, uh, having uh, a population security personnel of 33,783 for the police. And then we have uh, the sister agencies also bringing about 3,500 personnel uh, for 3,009 units and 203 watts. Do you see this as too much for the polls in as much as you have your reactions over what Pius yes. said? Yes. See, we tend to militarize our voting system. 33,000, 34,000. And that 3,500, you militarize. Look, there is a situation you get to mm. that the presence of these overpopulated uniform men can even scare voters. Mm. Even when they are not armed, they can scare voters. We should progress to a situation where the voters, we just, what stops us from voting from our houses? Mm, that, uh, so that can bring more convenience in the electoral process? Yes! Why bring it 34,000? Look at the police that is already underfunded. But again, don't forget that we've been having issues about uh, insecurity, having issues about political thuggery that has dominated look, the quality. Look, and look, uh, look. that could be a very where, good reason where, why where, this is coming up. Where were all the lions and tigers in Benin? Or in those states? Don't you think the deployment of security personnel look, also helps to salvage this? The truth of the matter is that when you, Pius and myself, says, our votes will not be taken away from us. Mm. No lions and tigers with AK-49 can take them. <laughs> Nobody. Nobody. It is the consciousness that is important. Okay, tell me. Because I will have to divert a bit to what my highly respected chairman was saying at the beginning of his statement that there is blame shift okay. between INEC and police. Now, if that be the case, why do we have 
a new agency that deals with exportation of our gas mm. to foreign countries. It is the exigencies of the time that made us create NAPTIC. That's a body against procession and, export, uh, and uh, exportation of our guests mm. and others. And this body, as my chairman would agree, is also empowered not only to arrest, but to investigate and prosecute. They don't do any other business except that. So, no policeman is going to tell you it is INEC that is not making us to prosecute such offenders. Mm. If INEC has become a body that shifts its responsibilities to police, and police shifts to INEC, why not create a third body <laughs> that is independently funded and responsible only for elections. Starting with sponsoring a bill. Bill. Mm. That's another aspect. Then when you look forward, you find that the black man must not be known for only the bad things. That was why initially I said we should also thank God that Okonjo Iweala has become the first black person to hold the position of DG World Trade Organization. And the first female. First female. Yes. Why can't we also become the first known country to have such a body? Okay, uh, thank you. I'll come back to you. Uh, as we can see on the visual, as we have uh, the PDP deputy governorship candidate and uh, member, House of Reps, Ikea Boju uh, Boluga, commenting on the process after voting. And that uh, will be joining will be joining Kingsley Uchegbo on that. Good morning, Kingsley. So, 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 you franchise or franchise yeah. as deputy can the government can of GDP. How would you describe the process so far? It has been peaceful. Um, everything has gone smoothly so far. And then uh, we don't expect any problems. Okay, so uh, we have heard the what, what about the use of the candidates, the, your unit and the reports we get it's around? Been functioning. Uh, the report, I've only had reports of uh, malfunctioning in one unit and that they want to replace it. And I'm very sure that uh, there's no problem with that. There's not been, I've not had any major complaints about that uh, in any of the units except for one instance. And I'm very sure it's been attended to. There has not been any issue of violence. Violence, no, you can see for yourself. What is what about the electoral uh pre electoral violence? We don't have uh, such instant incidents in our area. Uh, I'm not saying it won't happen, but we pray it doesn't happen. Uh, so far it's been very peaceful. Sir, as a prime uh, actor in this uh, election, so far so good. Are you optimistic with the uh, on the outcome of the results? Of course, it's going to be victory for PDP uh, uh, in this election. We're confident because we've been able to get our message across to the electorate. We've been able to preach responsible government. We've been able to let them know that PDP offers viable, responsible, fit for purpose government. There's no way uh, people will allow a government of APC headed by Arapone uh, Akeredo to continue. It is, the, the rejection is palpable. You can feel it. You can sense it. Uh, and I think the people are resolute in rejecting a non-performing government. Government that is, has abandoned its responsibility to the people. So I think by the grace of God, we're going to be victorious. And that will end a bad government in the state. Finally, sir, people have been talking about vote buying that. The issues are the APC that bring it to the table. 
There is a limit. If our people they've reached their tolerance limit and they're not going to buy or accept anybody buying their vote. Our people, they, quite, they understand what is at stake. There is, this is the time to reject irresponsible leadership, irresponsible government and embrace a government that is going to meet the needs of the people. A government that has a shared agenda with the people. So you there's no doubt about uh, optimism. Yes. What about the peace talk? The other way? Yes. Well, 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 that's the verdict of the yeah. people. As long as it's not predicated on falsification, fraud, or massive vote behind that is visible, that is uh, that is, we have evidence for. So there's no choice. If you lose election, you lose election, and ultimately it is the people that take decision whether they vote for you or not. You can see everything's been peaceful so far, and we genuinely believe it should be peaceful. All right. The Kangbojo Bologa really commenting on the electoral process and uh, what the, the, the striking quality there is, he said is that uh, uh, substantially the process has been peaceful uh, and can we say that's a pullout in this electoral process? Well, um, they are those in the field and they are saying that the process has been okay, it has been peaceful. That, like I said, is uh, expected. Okay. Because, of course, like I started uh, when I commenced the discussion here today, that there has been this consciousness on the part of the electorate to come out and then, of course, express their, I mean, to cast their votes mm. and then, to, of course, to vote in the candidate of their choice. From uh, the interview just now, you will observe that every person is optimistic of uh, success of victory. Positive outcome. Yes. Okay. And of course, there has been no substantial incidents of incidents violence, of violence in okay. the elections. Okay. And it is our expectation well, well, that all this should continue. Yeah. Okay. Political pundits have always said, uh, A.B. Thomas, that uh, well, uh, in our history, uh, substantially, we've always been having a substantially peaceful process. But in terms of coalition, in terms of coalition and uh, announcing of results. Uh, that becomes a, a very intriguing process where uh, anything could happen. Can we uh, take that as a fact? That is true, very true, particularly in situations where the constitution of the country. Okay. I, I think I'll, I'll come back to you on that. I, as we can see, uh, we're going to be bringing you a clip on the former governor of Ondo State, Dr. Olusegun Mimiko, who just voted in his unit, 20B, what, 7, Ondo Town. So, sir, how will you want to view the process so far? Well, on the face of it, it's quiet and um, at least this location. I can only talk authoritatively, authentically about this location. It looks peaceful. Before I got here, I was, I was a view 
incident of people trying to purchase votes and the understand it's been rectified now. Looks peaceful in the face of the people. But we need to get a report from that location before I can make any meaningful comment. So how do you want to assess the turnout? No, the turnout sir. looks impressive. Yeah, this location. I can speak of it clearly for this location. This looks very impressive to me. Especially when you view it from the backdrop of all the threat, all the pre-election brigandage that gave us some trepidation about voter turnout. But I think this place, the turnout is decent. It looks okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, our former governor of Ondo State, Dr. Lucia Gumimiko, who just voted in Unit 20B, Ward 7, Ondo Town. Again, substantially peaceful in that ward. <coughs> you see, your question has to do with not the voting process itself, mm. but collation and the actual results. Yes. When people like Mimiko or Lucia comes into play ordinarily because if you have traveled in the sunshine state Ondo in a state so the way I have done mm. almost, I have been to almost the entire 70 local government councils mm. in Ondo state or do I am from Ongo state the entire 17 but we have 18 so one is left out <laughs> yes, there's no way I could have been to 18. <laughs> if I have scored 17 over 18, I think I should. <laughs> you give me a pass mark. All right, so, so. Now, you find that people like that should be involved in credible processes yes. that will lead to collection. But you see, in Nigeria, people like late Agago. Who was the predecessor to Mibiko? These were politicians who understood the workings of the rigging process. Hmm. <laughs> you have to follow the ballot buses. After the reading out of the results, not everybody. But the agents of the political parties should be able to transmit what has been read out. I recorded with my phone what was counted and I transmitted to relevant bodies. If every person who is a stakeholder in the election is able to do this, the idea of having discrepancies between the actual votes counted and have the votes eventually announced between the unit polls, the local government, the uh, wards, yes. and local government and state level, the discrepancies will be reduced. Be reduced. The point is, most people vote, and the next thing is, you vote in Omakawe. If you say Omakawe, then your vote becomes irrelevant. That was what happened in the Doe State. Mm. People became very conscious that, look, I cannot stay here, vote, and my vote, my vote become irrelevant. I am expecting such situation in Sunshine State or those states. Okay. Because they are very politically educated. They are not going to tolerate any discrepancy between what they have voted and what the ultimate result will be. Okay. So I pray that the same sincerity 
the same professionalism, the same attitude that INEC displayed in the elections will be carried over to the elections holding today in all those states. Okay. Because when the polling, the polls, the casting of ballots are so sincere, it reduces the possibility of malfeasance, the possibility of violence after election. Okay. And I think we have graduated to such a level that we should not be able to follow our voice cast to the announcement at the unit to the world we should be able to get this things right. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, let's get a comment, Spiros Oiwo, in terms of the security deployment uh, and uh, if that in any way could affect the uh, authenticity of the process. Well, I, like the Chief Abbey Thomas mentioned about the uh, deployment of security personnel, 33,000 for the police and yeah. other sister agencies having such a number. Uh, I see it as, like you said, as actually intimidating the voters. Okay, thank you. I'll come back to you, Pio Soewo. Right, okay. As you can see on the visuals uh, from Omowa Jonah, we have PDP candidate Itayo Jegede and his wife just voted at the St. Brendan's Primary School, Ward 2, Unit 9, in Akure South local government area. Let's get this. Okay, so uh, as, as you can see, I think uh, there's much uh, progress uh, as uh, we have that uh, feed in uh, Ward 2, Unit 9 in Akure, South Local Government Area. Now, uh, let's, let's, let's look at what uh, that brings on board, like what you were saying, you had the floor. Yes, that um, the presence of security personnel in our electoral, electoral process in such an intimidating number is something that uh, we really need to look at mm. very critically now. Apart from the fact that it also intimidates voters, um, I see it as a practice that is unsustainable. Because for now, we are having let, uh, the Edo, the Ondo, and some other states whose elections are staggered. They may be able to use these numbers. But when we come to the general election, as it affects elections being conducted across boards, across the different states of the Federation wow. the same day. Yes, we could have that challenge. We may not be able to sustain this practice. Then, we'll go back to the old days. So, I sincerely believe that the fact that it worked in Edo, or we believe that, oh, security personnel were so active in Edo, and now in Ondo, the IG will not come out to make such pronouncement in other states too, because they do not have the personnel to go around these states mm. for the purposes of monitoring elections. Okay. So let us begin to have a new thinking. Okay, before we get to that new thinking, yes. uh, don't you think uh, what has happened so far in terms of security deployment, uh, if we uh, take a retrospect and the build up to this uh, poll today in Ondo State, there were issues about uh, uh, Togri, issues about uh, you know, destruction of property. Uh, don't you think that again could be the reason why the security deployment could also tackle that angle? I do not think that sincerely. Really? I do not think that. And if that is the thinking of the security experts, then of course they are not doing the right thing. Okay, what's the new thinking? The, the thinking should be that, first of all, there should be this consciousness. Irrespective of the togri that we may experience during the build up to the election. On the day of the election itself, the actual voting day, the presence of sparse security personnel in the different polling units would, of course, still achieve the results that we are seeing and getting now. Like I said, let us not believe in a process that we know we cannot sustain. In every other state, too, we will begin to experience things like this. In Kogi State, Kogi did the election before Edo. There were also presence of security personnel. But of course, you saw what happened in Kogi State. So let us begin to have, like Chief said, 
the consciousness of persons to defend their votes. If we are so many in an electoral process, like you saw uh, the Eita of voting, and you yeah. saw the crowd there. Yes. We saw this man to um, Akete voting in Owo. You saw the crowd there too. We also saw Mimiko going to cast his vote. We saw the crowd there. I sincerely believe that these persons who are a kind of who are architects of toggery and violence will not be able to overrun these persons if they sincerely stand to say they want to defend their votes. Okay. Well, thank you. He, he, he just raised the point. Uh, like uh, we look at the general elections, for instance, we, we may not have this while, of security. While defense. adopting the views of my Lenny Chairman as my There is no way you can sustain by three, thirty-four thousand in general election. No, no, no. Four it, states. It's a far cry from what uh, the current realities show. There is a program the federal government is saying they want to do. I'm not so much interested in all these things. That says 774 people will be employed. Mm in the 774 local governments. That is 774,000. So mm. If you are to do that arithmetically, <laughs> geographically, and in a sincere government, that should give each local government 1,000 1, personnel. Yes. That should give. In right thinking. Because this is where a situation of two plus two becomes eight. <laughs> if you do that, it should give every local government 1,000 personnel. And that will reduce unemployment. Okay, so you welcome that development. I, that's why I said I adopt mm. what my chairman said as mine. But the issue is this. What is the duty of some underfunded agencies that have become moribund, like NOA, National Orientation mm -hmm. Agency. Are these bodies not supposed to sensitize the public? Don't forget, I said earlier on, that when the people decide to vote no AK-49 can take away their ballot papers. I am telling you, believe me. You see this issue of toggery, irregular, uh, uh, irregularities in uh, uh, votes counted. They only happen when, for instance, in the polling unit of 500, only 200 people come out to vote. Okay, thank you. I'll come back to you. From Kingsley Chamber, we have a <laughs> member representing Okitufupa, one constituency, Akiro Gunde, Akin Tomide, commenting after voting in Unit 7, Ijodo. <laughs> Representing a very good people of Okitufupa constituency, one in the state house of Assembly. You just uh, said the franchise. Yes. How would you describe that? Well, as you can see, it, it, it is clear, it's crystal clear that there's no mass here, there's peace, and the process is going on all the time. So I think uh, it's part of uh, the orientation provided. Wow. Towards this election, to so, success. So, I think everything, everything has been normal. So, uh, how is the compliance to the COVID-19? Well, as you said, everybody is with the uh, mask to ensure that to reduce transmission and as well maintain distance among. Yeah. So well, my expectation is not far fetched that everybody is happy that they have been, they have been able to exercise uh, their 
Jesus' right as determining as determining the in the course of determining who pilot the affairs of our dear state for the next four years. Everybody is happy. It's free. The atmosphere is conducive, and everybody is is elated. Making sure that we do the need for the member representing Okutukupa one constituency Akirungude Akitomide commenting after voting in Unit 7 Ijodo. Again, we still have a positive comment on that. Now, you are, you are, we are receiving positive comments. Yeah. These are from people in different constituencies, in different local government councils as we have seen from TV. There is no way the police can be omnipresent and omniscient. They can't be everywhere. But if the people who are going to vote in their different local governments or wards or units are determined to defend their votes, the votes will count. Mm. Let me tell you something you that is very common knowledge but we don't practice. I gave you an example. If a polling unit has a number of 500 and only 200 comes out to vote, as we have 17 political parties contesting in all those states, okay. how do you expect there not to be violence or vote rigging? It will happen. Because you don't have a, a sizable population. You don't have a sizable population of people coming out. Mm. But if you have 500 people in a polling unit and 400 turns out. That's huge. How are you going to do that? The people you are calling lions and tigers in quotes, they are not omnipotent and omnipresent. They are human beings. They will go on land. They don't come from Holy Ghost or somewhere. Okay, but the voting population in Nondo State, for instance, has uh, from 2011 till date, has only improved from like um, 30 to 35 percent, and so which, brother, is, which is still a far cry. What I am saying other. is not the figures I gives you. <laughs> it is the actual figures of those who come out to vote. Okay. I mentioned National Orientation Agency just now. What are they doing? Their office in Benin, the last time I passed through the office, their roof is gone. These are the agencies Babagida used in mobilizing people. We ought to use such agencies to mobilize people different from INEC. You see, I keep on talking about bodies different from INEC and mm. police. Mm, a separate body entirely. Separate body that will be given this, that special responsibility. Yes. If we do this, it has a multiplier effect. What? One, we create jobs for those agencies. Yeah. Two, we create awareness among the populace. Three, we lessen the body of the police. Four, we lessen the body on INEC. There are specialized bodies handling these issues. You need to come to court and see NAPTI lawyers prosecuting those who sponsor the people who are removed from states to other areas. They don't do another job. They focus on that NAPTI law or act that prohibits trafficking on human beings. That is just a job. And I can tell you, from my 34 years experience in practice, I'm very impressed with what they are doing. Mm. Why not create such specialized bodies and see if there will be no change? Okay, thank you. Now, for instance, it's not tied to any political party. Police will obey the political party in power. Okay. And you expect police to be neutral. So if they were neutral in the door, we were just lucky. And we should also be hopeful <laughs> that our luck will take us yeah, yeah, the ripple effect of that will happen again. Today, you don't just it. Okay, uh, well, 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 let's let's stretch the conversation uh, back to what transpired this morning. Uh, we are
uh, boats uh, carrying some INEC officials and uh, materials uh, capsized around the uh, Ilaje local government area. Uh, we could see the river, we could see the current of those waves, uh, which are really uh, portends uh, danger, you know, in terms of that. Uh, what do you make of that? Because uh, some uh, local government or some wards uh, who could them. be, yeah, who could, we could be affected by that whole incident. Uh, what do you make of that uh, well, incident? Well, sincerely speaking, I am taken aback by what I saw and heard yeah. about um, the boats capsizing, carrying electoral materials. Um, INEC has a blame in this whole thing. I expected that with having delineated that area as a voting constituency, mm. there ought to have been adequate arrangements. Uh, being that it's a river and area. Yes, they should have made adequate arrangements for this. The persons going carrying materials to such an area already knew before now that they were going to navigate through the river to get to where they are going to. And of course, Persons live in that area. I expect also that there ought to be security presence in such an area too. Um, and how do you do this? I expect that they should have engaged the services of helicopters. Okay. To take voting materials to this place. Okay. Not this way. Rather than rely on such a, a mode of transportation to take these things to this place. And I think with what we are seeing, we are definitely going to experience a situation of disenfranchisement of persons in that area. Mm. Because uh, the population of persons around that area. The largest, there are quite a substantial number of persons uh, who cannot just be dispensed with in an electoral process okay. as this. So, by and large, INEC should have made adequate arrangements just as they perhaps must have done at the time they went to paste voters' list and the rest of them around that area. And just as security personnel were drafted to such an area, to also know that these are safeguards that they ought to put in place. And of course, you could also not overrule the, uh, the activities of sabotage, uh, saboteurs in this whole thing. It is possible that certain persons who also see that area as a formidable terrain for one of the candidates may have be responsible for what we are saying there too. So that may is have why, been responsible for that. For what okay. you are saying, it is you cannot overrule that. You cannot so, overrule that. Yes. So, but INEC ought to have. But from the waves, the, uh, from, from the waves, yes. the, 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 the waves. Uh, yes. <laughs> I think that that again uh, shows danger. You know, in, in terms of transportation, water transportation, like you did say, yes. uh, deploying uh, um, helicopters also well. is a way out of that. But outside that, uh, what's your bite? Couldn't there be a better way in terms of uh, water <clears> transportation, <throat> like what we noticed this morning? Like I have only said, we should also be developing Nicaragua, Colombia, Peru, mm. are fourth or fifth world countries like us. We're no more taught. We are back. But why river transportation can have its own? Navigational problems. So do air, right. like okay, helicopters, have also have their own challenges. Yeah. But the point is this: Do we always prepare for emergencies like this? Where is Nigerian Navy? At least I don't expect Nigerian Navy in Benin. <laughs> that is where I expect them to be. Uh, being that I have been that area of concentration. I have been to all those riverine areas in all those states. But we can't take that away. It's very possible that they are also uh, playing very strategic roles in the uh, Look, state. we saw these things uh, from your clip. I couldn't see any naval personnel there. Unless my eyes are deceiving me. Again, that could also be the limitation of what uh, we That do. is what I am saying. What are our preparations? We should progress. We don't have to wait for disaster and start creating Ministry of Human, Humanitarian and Disaster Management. <laughs> we don't need to wait for all these things. They never possibly are all lying down doing nothing. Okay. Uh, well, uh, following violence at uh, polling units in Owo, 
uh, again, uh, uh, Governor Akerodolu's wife allegedly injured following that violence at the polling unit in Owo. I think uh, this is a, a very ugly incident. And uh, looking at what political pundits have been saying concerning uh, the challenge that... Yeah, but if you look at what we are seeing now, yes. if you look at what we are seeing now, the policemen there are in charge. All right? Mm. And if you actually have the number of people who have registered, do you know that in Nigeria State, about half of those who registered to vote did not collect their voters' cards? Not even talk of voting. Okay. You look at what we are seeing there now. The so called talks we are seeing there are fewer than. They are fewer. The policemen. Yes, yes. Which again uh, brings a, a, a huge and uh, laudable point in I terms am, of the uh, uh, security. I am deployment. saying, I am saying, you can't come to my police units and do this nonsense. You can't do that. Look, forget that I'm a lawyer. I am first and foremost a human being. <laughs> With your suit, you are a human being. My chairman is a human being. With adequate education. With adequate orientation, we can overwhelm a few group of talks who wants to disenfranchise and deny us our voting rights. Okay, but if we look at the alleged injury of uh, the wife of the look, governor, is okay. that the, where were the security person? Look, 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 my brother, is that the only person in that place? The wife of the governor or whoever the person was, is she the only person was injured? We make mountain not of a more hill. There may be other people who are injured, but because she's the wife of the governor. You came to news. You came to news. Look, let us strengthen our institutions. Let's create new institutions for specific offenses, for specific purposes. I will agree with you if you tell me that the greed, self-interest of our politicians may not allow them to create institutions that will be opposite to their own interests. I will agree with you. Oiwo is my chairman, but he cannot go and make laws in Abuja. Neither can you, nor myself. But we have elected people we have elected to represent us. How far will these people go to protect your vote and my vote by creating the agencies through legislation? How far will they go? If they believe that the current situation will permit them to return if they follow what is happening. We have all the results we have been seeing from your station here, they have been positive. Mm. Except this last one yes. we have just seen. Yes, it's chemist of violence. Uh, then why are you talking of the wife of a governor? Is the wife of a governor equal to the entire population of the that polling unit? No. And in any, in any case, the wife of the governor or the governor mm. is not entitled to be escorted to that police unit by armed security guards mm. on a voting day like this. After all, we have a security personnel uh, hey, around the vicinity. And they have taken care and of they took charge of it. Okay. They, they've done that. Mm. What else do you want? So that's quite a lot of So it. you need, again, <laughs> National Orientation Agency. These lions and tigers, are they not human beings? If they are well orientated, Tell them, the man who is sending you to go and cause the mayhem there, where are his children? Where are the man's children? I have, for 15 years, I was chairman of a whole community being here. I have been able to handle the community for 15 years without violence. Because when people come in from other communities to come and create problems, rather than confronting them with violence, I reorientate them by asking them, this chief who sent you to my community, okay. where are his own children? Okay. By the time you hear such things, 
and you notice a body as this uh, what are they call community development agency uh, authority the CDA okay, CDA. Yeah. <laughs> you now come out and say you are a CDA member and I tell you that a Russell community or what is it called they are going to jail you if you say you are a community CDA member the moment you are orientated and you know that the man who sent you is children at a school in England mm. or in Ghana you will go into your house mm. and let you to also come out it is not okay for you to register to vote because you need the voter's card as ID card in bank or somewhere there are the of election you don't come out okay Thank you, thank you. Well, 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 let's let's take a very sensitive part of our uh, of our polity, our political process, and the whole aspect of um, making offices less attractive as a way out of this uh, political violence. Do you key into that, Pius? Well, sincerely, I key into that. You, you see, um, from time to time, we begin to see and experience the fact that people would go all out to get to an office mm. because of the attraction the largesse, because of the largesse yeah. of that <laughs> office and i think that is part of what is making it look like a do or die thing mm. the 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 earlier we start this uh, kind of uh, the uh, uh, do i say um, we begin to show that these offices are less attractive in terms of monetary fundings mm. in terms of uh, votes security votes and the rest of them i think the better for us uh, in the developed uh, nations, Europe and America, you realize that um, there is a gradual departure from this unnecessary attraction mm. to, the, to office, political offices. And um, if indeed there is, um, the, the offices are less attractive in terms of monetary gains, then people would begin to, and they put in front the need to serve the people rather than being served. If service is their watchword and it is given a priority, then of course you will begin to see that people would be uh, less interested and then there will be less violence in trying to get to somewhere. Again, it underscores what we see when we begin to say, oh, governorship must come, the governorship candidate must come from my local government or must come from my own senatorial district. If indeed there is these attractions, these uh, the need to lobby and then attract development to a particular area because that area produces the governor is not emphasized. We will not be experiencing some of the things we are seeing today. Yeah. Like uh, my senior here said about on the issue of, because I feel that I have to respond to that too, or just to lend my voice to what he has said. Okay. You see, um, he talked about the National Orientation Agency. I am also talking about, in addition to that, our religious leaders. Our religious leaders in the last election, the build up to the election in Edo State, um, secular letters were sent to most churches, particularly, for instance, in my church, the Archbishop of Benin Metropolitan, uh, the Catholic Diocese, okay. sent out secular that parishioners, uh, faithfuls, lay faithfuls, and the rest of them should ensure that they come out and cast their votes. Of course, this again encourages the voters to come out and then exercise their franchise. If we have a sizable number of persons, like he said, come out to cast their votes, by so doing, you would have overwhelmed the persons who will come in their very minute number. Okay, but, 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 but in the overall, do you see improvement in terms of political participation in that direction? Yes, that is exactly what we are saying, that, that there has been an improvement. Okay. And that, I believe, is what is going to be replicated in those states. Okay. People coming out to say, ah, look, we now believe, again, it, it borders on the belief in the electoral process. In the past, people feel that their votes may not count. But now, there is the belief that, look, you come out, you cast your vote. The narratives course, are changing. The narrative, yes, of course, they are mm -hmm. changing. Mm -hmm. And then they come out and then they say their franchise. Where will the votes now come from? to top up what has been declared, I mean, what has been uh, casted at the electoral 
at the uh, polling, different mm -hmm. polling units. Certainly, no such uh, arrangement, no such uh, opportunity will be there okay. because people all came out. The voters' registers were marked as people came out to cast their vote, except, of course, for few persons who may have passed on before the electoral the date for the election. Okay. So, people should come out, and again, you realize that there was emphasis because whoever is on the other side. Both are not particularly particular about a, a political party. But you realize that there was an intense, uh, do I say, um, effort at buying votes because such persons would have felt that, look, we will not be able to overwhelm if the issue of violence, if we resort to violence. Okay. Then let us resort to buying the conscience of these persons. Mm. And when it, it is now realized that people are gradually saying, oh, I will take your money, I will still vote my conscience. Yes. Then, of course, you realize that in subsequent elections, people would think twice okay. and rather think of the integrity of the persons. If you, are, if you have credibility, you come out and vote. If your past is one that people want to identify with, okay. of course, okay. you come out, people will cast their vote for you. Okay. You don't need to. Whether you are in a popular political party or not, people see you, although the political party that you come from, the platform upon which you operate, has some level of, uh, do I say, um, uh, some level of support okay. or attractions that it gives to you. But to a large extent, the person, the integrity or character of the person that comes out in an election has a long way to go in an electoral process. Thank you for uh, stretching that conversation uh, up to the point of the vote buying and all that. But let's look at uh, making offices less attractive. Uh, we've always had this discourse. Can we go in this direction? Yes. Um, why don't we try this? The executive arm is what actually remains as a democratic institution and defines democracy in any political space. So if the executive arm is made up of military men. <laughs> that is militocracy. If the executive arm is made up of civilians as we have now, that is civil democracy. Since that arm must be there, then we have two other arms of government. The legislature and the judiciary. Mm. Right from time memorial, the judiciary, even in communal days of Ogisos, mm. there was judiciary. And judiciary always remains there, yeah, even under meritocracy. Okay, the so, so, so we've had this in our the only, practice, even before the, only the white man's government. Yes, the only arm of government that is problematic is the legislature. Hmm. Why don't we also try this? All members of the legislature should become part-time. <laughs> Go on part-time basis. Yes. And we paid according to the number of citizens you attend. Let's see whether they will kill themselves to go there. And what...